Hello, welcome to The Knit Shift, episode 43. My name is Lara, and today is Friday, February 26th, 2016. If you are new here, welcome. Thank you for checking me out. This is a knitting podcast, and if you are coming back, thank you so much for spending a little bit of your time with me. I hope you guys have had a great week. It's been only five days, I think, since I last recorded, which is kind of a short window for me, but I have lots to talk about. Um, If you want to find show notes for this episode, they're available at theknitshift.com. You can find this podcast on iTunes and YouTube. And if you have not subscribed yet on YouTube, please think about doing so. You'll kind of be updated. Um, You'll get a little notification when I post new episodes. And um, if you subscribe, it lets me know that you are, you know, people are watching, which I like. So, um, and selfishly, if I can fully confess, I would love to hit 500 subscribers um, in the next month. I'm, I'm only six or seven away, so I feel like I'm really close. I'm going to get there, I hope, I think. Um, I would love to hit 500 subscribers before my one-year anniversary, so um, help me out, please, pretty please. So, anyway... Um, we do, I'm on Instagram as Laura Mahalski and I'm on Ravelry as Yarn Stormer and we do have a group on Ravelry for the podcast called The Knit Shift and we do have a knit along going on right now, um, uh, for the Antarctic shawl. So please come over and check that out. Uh, the, it continues until about March, I think March 31st is the last day of March. I always forget if March ends in a 30 or a 31. I think it's 31. So there's plenty of time to join in if you have not yet. Um, we're knitting the Antarctic shawl. It's a paid-for pattern by Janina Calio, and it's a um, single skein of sock yarn. All you need is a single skein of sock yarn, and it's an asymmetrical shawl. And it's really pretty, and there's different sections of lace and garter and eyelets. And had I um, had my act together, I would have brought it out here but I forgot. I finished mine in two and a half, three weeks. It's a really fast knit. And if you are knitting it and you, um, you're you thinking, oh my gosh, this is small, don't worry. It will grow when you block it, um, when you soak it. And then if you pin it out, it really does grow a lot horizontally. So um, have no fear. Um, Janina Kaleo, the designer of Antarctis, has generously donated a copy of one of her patterns to someone who finishes their shawl in the knit along. So we have two threads in the Ravelry group right now, um, one for finished objects and one for chatter. So the chatter should stay in the chatter thread. The FO thread is just for photos if you have finished your shawl. And um, there's lots of really pretty photos over in the threads. Come check them out. Um, Some people are knitting their Antarctis with a gradient. Um, Java Jenny is striping hers. It looks fantastic. So please come over and check out the photos. Um, And I probably will have, so there will be a pattern prize from the FO thread. I'll probably do a giveaway of, I don't know what yet, from the um, chatter thread. So stay tuned. So this episode for you, I have a new work in progress that will not be a work in progress for very long, but which I will explain. I have a work in progress you haven't seen in a couple weeks, and I have, um, yeah, just a lot of random little stuff to talk about, so let's get to it, shall we? Um, Oh, before I get into works in progress, let me tell you guys one more schedule thing. This week, I uh, got an email from Fiberspace, which is a yarn shop in Alexandria in Northern Virginia, very close to Washington, D.C., and they are hosting Susan B. Anderson for a weekend of classes, and I bit the bullet and decided to sign up for not one but two of the classes. I will be in Alexandria uh, Friday, May 20th, attending two classes. There is a class from 11 to 2 about designing your own shawl, like if you have a really pretty skein of yarn and you don't know, um, you know, you can't find the right pattern for it, she's going to show us how to kind of design your own shawl and some techniques to kind of, kind of a create your own shawl adventure, I think. And then the latter class uh, from that that evening, that afternoon, is on making those folk dolls that Susan B. Anderson makes. They're so sweet. And if you don't know Susan B. Anderson, she has a wonderful knitting blog 
and a wonderful podcast, and I highly recommend checking out both. I'll link to her in the show notes. But she knits these little folk dolls. They are so sweet, and I just think they would make the nicest gift for a little girl or boy. Um, They're just darling. So I will link to the class stuff in the show notes. So um, I cannot wait. My uh, friend of mine is going to D.C. with me, and we're going to... We're going to do it all in one day. It'll be a long day, but I cannot wait. Um, So it's about three months away. So let's get to the knitting. I have a pair of socks that you've seen before, and I am keeping this in my bag that my friend Lennis made for me. Thank you, Lennis. And I, uh, these are my hedgehog socks. These are hedgehog fibers, twist sock, and the colorway monarch. And as you can see, I am just about done with them. Um, It's been two or three weeks since I showed these on the podcast. This little stitch marker shows you where I was, so I've knit the entire, both legs and a good, probably an inch and a half of ribbing so far. Um, This colorway is just so pretty. It's kind of a peachy yellow base. Um, It's a little washed out right now. I'm getting more sun in my living room than, than before. Um, But it's yellows and oranges and flecks of black and flecks of white. And I love this kind of coral right here, but I really, really love the flecks of hot pink. Um, So I'm really enjoying these. Um, Hedgehog Fibers Twist Sock is uh, a merino nylon blend superwash, and um, here's the cake. Here's what's left of the cake. But unlike their other sock yarn, uh, Hedgehog Sock, this has a nice twist, and I think this wears better than their Hedgehog Sock. For me, personally, I think hedgehog sock is best reserved for shawls or hats or cowls and not for use on the feet because I wear my socks out really easily um, if it's if the yarn isn't sturdy enough. So I'm knitting these um, two at a time toe up on a uh, magic loop with a chai goo needle and the size is zero and it's a 2.0 millimeter. And I've recently come to the realization that I needed to go down to a zero for my socks to be, to get the kind of fabric that I wanted. Um, I guess I'm becoming a looser knitter over time and I'm needing to go down in needle size to accommodate that, to account for that. So I I kind of think I'm going to double this ribbing from what's here because I really want a nice, tall, stretchy ribbing. And I do have to say the size zero really, and I'm sorry for my winter hands that are just, I never paint my nails and they're just, my cuticles are a mess, so I'm sorry, I'm the worst podcaster. But I really like the ribbing, the the effect of the size zero and the yarn. I just think it makes the ribbing look so darn crisp. So really, I, I'm enjoying that, even though it takes, it feels like it takes forever on a size zero needle and two at a time. Um, I'm not using a pattern for these. These are just my generic self-created recipe. I cast on probably 32 stitches with Judy's Magic Cast On. I increased every third round, I think, um, until I hit 68 stitches. I went up the foot. Um, And I talked in a previous episode, um, I often do Fish Lips Kiss Heels because they're so fast and quick, but this yarn is so nice. I really wanted the heel to fit me just perfectly, so I opted to do a gusset and heel flap um, with this yarn. So that's what I did, and I'm just carrying on up the leg, bing, bang, boom, I'll have a pair of socks pretty soon. So this will be my second pair of socks for the year, and while I don't have a sock goal for the year, I think internally I'm kind of hoping I can pull off a pair a month. That's kind of my goal. In past years, I've knit a lot more socks, but I also wasn't knitting shawls and sweaters, and I wasn't making a podcast, and I didn't have as demanding of a job, so I think 12 pairs in a year is probably a good goal for me. So I really want to finish these by Monday. Um, I'm off work Sundays and Mondays, so my goal is to finish these socks by the end of my weekend. So I have faith. The next work in progress I want to show you is the thing that I mentioned that would not be a work in progress for very long. So I mentioned in last week's episode that I wanted to knit something out of the new Pom Pom Quarterly. It is issue, it's the spring 2016 
and I believe it's the, the 16th issue. So I really wanted to knit this circular scarf, cowl, whatever you want to call it, called striated. And so here's a picture of it. And here's another picture from the front. I, I said that I wanted to knit this for a friend who is um, moving. So I cast it on. Um, I used the provisional cast on that was recommended. And so that's what the orange is. So um, when you come back, when you finish the whole thing and you come back to join it, you can just unzip the crochet stitches and put these purple stitches on your live needles and then you can kitchener it, whoop, close it on up and it'll be nice and seamless and beautiful. So I'm using a bigger needle than what was called for. Um, it called for a size three, but I opted to go up to a size five because I really thought it would be better if it was really lacy. Um, and I also, <coughs> excuse me, I also thought that having a bigger needle would mean it would go a lot faster, which of course is always true. But the thing about this project that I did not really think about when I decided this would make a nice gift for my friend who's moving, I didn't think about the fact that I flipping hate to knit scarves. There is, you know, scarves are, are, are a really good beginner project when you're a new knitter because they're straight and they're flat and it's just, you know, it's just very straightforward. And, you know, and there's nothing wrong with knitting scarves. Just for me, I get so bored so easily because it's just, you go across and you go back. And it's like, tw it's like 35 stitches or whatever. And you finish a row in like a couple, a minute or two, and then you have to turn it around. And there's just... Oh man, it's just, it's boring. I'm never going to finish this. I'm, I know it. I'm never going to finish this. And I am literally three inches into this scarf. And I think I'd have to knit like 80 more. I can't do it. I can't bring myself to finish it. And it's a very easy repeat. It's a two row repeat. It could not be easier. I just know myself. And I think it's important to be honest with yourself in knitting. And I am totally going to frog this like as soon as I finish filming this episode. I just felt like I needed to show you guys because I had talked about wanting to knit this project. And then once I started knitting it, I was like, whoa, Nelly, this is not going to happen. So I need to find another project for my friend. In fact, you know what? I'm going to be bold and I'm just going to take it all off the needles right now. So may you rest in peace, striated. Um... And I think I said it's a pattern by Nikki Merrill. So you can see that I have already caked this yarn and I had frogged it from another project. So this will now be the second project I am frogging it in. So I'm really hoping the third time is a charm for this yarn. Um, oh, and I didn't tell you what this yarn is. This is French Market Fibers um, Warehouse Sock in the Moonlight on the, I'm sorry, Midnight on the Moonwalk. Or is it Moon on the Mid, I, let me pull up my notes. Midnight on the Moonwalk colorway. Um, it's a lovely purple gray. It's a little bit washed out right here, but um, it's just a really pretty color. And I think it would be so nice for my friend who's moving away. So perhaps I will instead knit her a honey cowl held. Maybe I'll hold this double. Um, maybe I will, I don't know, knit a hat for her. I know for a fact that um, this is for a coworker who's leaving. And I don't know that how many of my coworkers watch this, so I won't use names, but um, she's moving up to Washington, D.C. And another friend at work is knitting, or is cro she's a crocheter, and my friend the crocheter is making a hat that looks like BB-8 from Star Wars, The Force Awakens, you know, the little droid. And um, I guess that's the my, my hand signal, my Lara sign language for droid. You know, because he's a little, she's a little ball. Boop, 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 boop. Anyway, this is just getting weird. So, um, so she's making this friend a BB-8 hat. So maybe I don't want to make a hat. But I don't know. We'll see. So I'll think about it. Um, maybe I'll make this my travel project for when I go to Pittsburgh next weekend. Or maybe I'll start another pair of socks. You know, that's what I need to make her. I love knitting socks. I'm such a fast sock knitter. 
that's what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to turn these into a pair of socks for her because I know what shoe size she is because we've gone shopping together before. We go thrifting together, this friend and I. So she has tiny feet, which is another reason to make her socks, you know? Because I wear size 11 and I think she's a six and a half. Yeah, that's definitely what I'm going to do. See, I'm glad we talked about this. Even if it was a one-sided conversation, I'm glad I worked that out with you guys because I needed to figure out what I wanted to make her. So, okay, it's decided. She will get some socks. And I've reached a point where the yarn is sticking, so I'm going to stop frogging that and set it aside. So, yes, um, when it comes to future knits, obviously I have to find and make something for this friend. She's leaving in a gosh, like two and a half weeks. I really got to hustle. Um, and I do want to knit myself a sock head hat. And I've been thinking I had posted a photo to Instagram a couple days back about the two colors I was thinking of for my sock head hat. And this is Lamy Toes Moon Pie Merino in the colorway Bad Egg, which I think is such a perfect springtime color. It's kind of a gray pinky base and there are just flecks of 8700 colors in here there's yellow and there's red and there's turquoise and aqua and green lime green and pale green and it's just so gorgeous um full disclosure my friend amanda who hosts not a podcast is the dyer behind lamy toes um she's wonderful she is so talented and if you have not checked out her etsy shop Go ahead. Just the way I'm holding this yarn, you guys, looks like the yarn has my hair. How funny is that? I'm just really, you know, it's Friday. I must be loopy, and I'll explain why I'm loopy later on. But anyway, this is her Moon Pie Merino base, which is a merino nylon blend. I, I know nothing of yarn bases except that this is perhaps the softest merino nylon blend I've ever felt in my life. I would rub it on my face if I weren't wearing makeup. So I'm just going to I'm just going to hold it up and close my eyes and fondle the yarn because it is just so gorgeous. Um I don't know like what kind of unicorn magical yarn she uses, but this is so soft. To me this feels like it could have cashmere in it. So please check out her Etsy shop. She has some beautiful stuff in there. And I have to like resist the urge to buy it. Like I physically have to restrain myself from going to her Etsy shop because I love her colorways so much. So go buy all the yarns so that I don't. Um, let's see. Oh, and the other colorway I'm thinking of for my sock head hat is this, which is a skein of which is a skein of skein. This is the the Australian company skein. It's the top draw sock. And the tag mentions that it is 437 yards, and it says 85% merino, 5% nylon. So I'm kind of, when would you focus, please? I'm kind of wondering where the other 10% is. I think it's cashmere, but it kind of would be nice if you put it on the label skein. Um, it's really, really soft. It's like this bait. It's just all these different shades of blue-green. I really have a thing for like blue, green, gray, purple, gray these days. I don't know what it is, but I think this would be really a really pretty hat too. So <clears throat> I already own two sock head hats that I've knit for myself, but they're both about three years old, if not more. So they're showing their age and the one hat I knit a little too big. So it's a really stretched out. It's just, um, it's not as cozy around the brim you know it's just kind of sits on my head and it's enormous so I really need a new hat so I'm leaning toward this because this is just so stunning and I think it would make a really sweet hat so here's one last view of me as the yarn as a person with hair no one's gonna watch this episode after this I'm just a little loopy today um so yes what else so I have no yarms to share with you, and if you're new here, yarms is just what I call my segment about stash enhancement, because when I get something in the mail, I just say to my boyfriend, I'm like, hey, I got some yarms today. What's up? So I have no stash enhancement, but I do have yarms for you courtesy of a swap I did. Um, I, I don't know if you watch the podcast The Knitting Broomstick, which is hosted by Jilly. But if you don't, you should. Um, she's really fun. She she loves, she's really into like geeky stuff. And if you're a Doctor Who fan, which I am not, 
But if you're a Doctor Who fan and you aren't watching her podcast, you should really watch it because she always has the latest news on Whovian inspired yarns and patterns and she just talked about some crazy who whovian um pattern collection that was coming out so she really has her finger on the pulse of doctor who um but jilly arranged for a swap um of mini skeins and i decided to participate so jilly paired me with um stacy who hosts a, a new podcast called Stress Knits. And Stacy was, uh, so to do a little research before the pot, before the, I did the swap, I started watching her podcast and I love it. It's now in my rotation. Um, she is a college student. I'm sorry, Gracie's decided to say hello. Gracie, can you not, please? Can you like go, Gracie has taken up uh, sitting on the back of the chair behind me. So I would love it if she did that instead of standing here with her butt in your face, rudely. Gracie, come on. Scoot, scoot. Get down. Sure, this is great. Mm -hmm. Sorry, guys. It's like a chair and a half. So it's a very big chair, and it's just the perfect size for the dog and me to share. And not in an easy fashion when I'm filming the podcast. So I have quite a few minis to show you um, from my swap with Stacy. She really spoiled me. There are so many wonderful colorways in here. I believe this is Nomadic Yarns in Orla. It's greens and purples. And, and I just love the way she packaged them with yarn holding it together. In fact, I'll, I'll take it apart right now to show you guys. Um, so I am pretty sure, let's see. I know this is Socks That Rock lightweight and the i'm looking at her note here banded agate is the colorway um good gracie laid down so that's the banded agate colorway which is browns and greens and or browns and pale blue and oranges and she sent me a couple andre sue knits which i've never used before so these are really fun let's see Oh, and this is Nitpick Stroll in the Make Believe colorway, which is really fun. I know this one because my friend Tiffany made me a beautiful shawl out of this. So um, that's a great a mini skein to have. Um, and she sent me some wool, wool, uh, some wool and vine in the colorway Pandora. And I believe this might be it. It's like white with pink, pink speckles. And she also sent me some... Um, or maybe this is Pandora. I really, I've never worked with Woolen Vine, so I have no idea. So there is also um, some Hedgehog Sock in Film Noir, which is really fun. Um, grays and blacks and pinks, and even some oranges, which I did not recognize until now. Um, that's the thing about Hedgehog. Some of her colors have just have these subtle little blips in there, which is so great. So, and here are the rest. She sent me some O loops and um, MS yarns, M5 yarns. I don't know. I'm not familiar with that one. And she sent me some beautiful washi tape, which is really lovely. But um, she very generously gave me a whole skein of sock yarn, too. Um, you know, we were allowed to include random things in the swap packages, and I sent her some some homemade jam and some gummy bears, and she sent me a skein of sock yarn. How generous is that? This is um, Malabrigo sock in the Velvet Grapes colorway, and you can kind of see the different tones of the purple in there. So I actually think these two would make a really nice purple shawl, like a two-colored shawl. So maybe, I don't know if I'll use this for socks for my friend. Maybe I'll pick another skein and knit her a pair of socks. <clears throat> to preserve the option to have this lovely two-colored purple shawl. Um, let me pull up my notes here. So that is it for swap stuff right now. Um, I'm working on a swap, <clears throat> pardon me, with someone in Australia right now, which I did through um, the Knitting Expats mini, pardon me again, um, the Knitting Expats mini swap. So uh, I'm working on my package, and that'll be going out in the mail in the next couple weeks. So, um, and I should be getting my package probably within a month. So I'm working on that swap. Um, if I can just put out, point my camera down a little bit so you can see 
Gracie has taken up, taken up residence on my lap here. It's very nice and warm. Um, she's probably like five pounds too big to be a lap dog, but I can deal with it. So um, anyway, so it's been a very busy week here outside of the knitting life for me. If you're new here, I am an editor at a news organization in Virginia. And, um, you know, Virginia uh, is one of the states that has its primaries on Tuesday, March 1st, which is Super Tuesday. And we have had or will have visits from all of the remaining presidential candidates in, an, in a seven day period, um, except for John Kasich who visited a while ago, but I digress. So Bernie Sanders was here on Tuesday, Donald Trump was here Wednesday, Ted Cruz is here tonight, Marco Rubio is here Sunday night, and Ben Carson and Hillary Clinton are both here on Monday, but obviously they are not having an event together, although that would be quite a sight to see. So we've had a lot of news going on here, building up to Super Tuesday. Um, and what made it an even busier week for me was there were, we had really bad weather Wednesday night. Um, we had tornadoes in our area um, about an hour away from here um, and three people died. And so uh, we sent the reporter to that and all night Wednesday, I was on the phone and listening for weather alerts and updating the website kind of um, since the night reporter went out, I kind of had to do a lot of updating of the weather alerts and we had t tornado warnings every, you know, a as the tornadoes traveled across North Carolina and Virginia, you know, the alert would change every 15, 20 minutes or so for a new area. So it was not a dull moment at all and um, just a really busy night. And I, I like to record on Thursdays, but I honestly had like a news hangover when I got up yesterday. I was, I didn't sleep well and I just was not in my best state of mind to make a podcast for you guys. So um, thankfully last night at work was a bit quieter and um, I was able to get a good night's sleep and record for you guys today. So, um, so that's what's been going on here. Um, <clears throat> and I think that brings me to a final segment I'm going to start calling Delish, which sounds kind of like I'm trying to be Rachel Ray and have like a chatty, fun little name for a, a segment, but it's going to be about where I talk about what I've been cooking at home lately. Um, you know, I work Tuesday through Saturday from about 1, 1 1.30 to 10, 10.30-ish, so I cannot cook five nights a week. Um, which kind of stinks. I, I use my crock pot a lot. I like to make soup for my boyfriend and me and um, then have a lot of leftovers from that and take it to work all week. So that's what I did this week. But um, I wanted to talk about two recipes I have made or am going to make soon. Actually, no, um, yeah, two recipes um, that I have made or am going to make soon. So a few weeks ago, I made a really delicious blueberry oat bread, which is kind of like a quick bread recipe, but it involved um, quick oats and fresh blueberries. And it was kind of like blueberry oatmeal muffins, but in a, in a bread, and it was so delicious. So I will share the link to that with you guys. And on Sunday, this coming Sunday, it's the Oscars. And um, I, you know, at my office, I used to work Sunday nights and on Oscar night we would have a potluck and everyone would bring in food and it was always a nice treat because some of us like to have the Oscars on in the background and look at the fancy dresses and say which dresses we liked as if we were kind of red carpet commentary. It was just kind of fun. It made a Sunday night a little more exciting. So I brought in, for the first time we did it, I made buffalo chicken dip um, from the website Skinny Taste. And it was so popular, it disappeared in like 20 minutes. Um, so the next year, I doubled it. And it still disappeared really fast. So I had started to quadruple the recipe for buffalo chicken dip because everyone loved it so much. It just always went so fast. So um, I'm not working Sundays anymore. So I get to sit in my pajamas and watch the Oscars at home. And um, some of my coworkers said, oh, what would do you think you'd want to come in for the potluck and maybe make something? Like they were kind of very sweetly dropping hints that my buffalo chicken dip was so good they wanted me to bring it in. 
and I was like, no, I'm not bringing it in, but I'm totally making it for myself. Um, so I will share the link with the, with you guys in the show notes for this buffalo chicken dip. Um, skinnytaste.com is a really great resource for healthy recipes. Um, she puts Weight Watchers points on stuff and her recipes are not, it doesn't taste like diet food, you know? I mean, in this buffalo chicken dip, it uses, um, third, third less fat, uh, cream cheese And it either calls for light, I think it calls for fat-free sour cream. Um, So it's cream cheese, sour cream, blue cheese crumbles, and wing sauce, and pre-cooked, pre-cut up or shredded chicken. And that's it. And you put it in your crock pot and heat it all up, and it's delightful. It's so good. And it does not taste, I mean, it tastes very unhealthy. And while, you know, you can't, it's, it's not the healthiest thing in the world, but it at least healthifies the recipe up by using stuff like really low fat cream cheese and fat free sour cream. It's so, it's addictive. It's like, it's, it's ridiculously addictive. I highly recommend it. So I'll link to that in the show notes. Um, and the final thing I was going to talk about, this is not a recipe, but this is one of my favorite food places. And I thought I would tell you guys about it because, um, it's just, it's local to me and I think it's kind of cool. So, Um, I live in Southeast Virginia, which is probably known best food-wise for peanuts and ham, like Virginia ham, Surrey ham. Smithfield ham is based like 45 minutes away from here. So, um, in fact, back in the day, I had a a co-worker who, he had a peanut guy, and he would bring into work, like he would, we we have a bureau out in Suffolk, Virginia, which is a big, you know, Suffolk is where Mr. Mr. Um, where Planters was founded, and Mr. Peanut kind of originated, all that kind of stuff. So, um, so, so Suffolk is a big peanut town. So this guy in the Suffolk bureau would meet up with the peanut guy and get bags of peanuts and bring them to my coworker in Norfolk. Like it's it's like a it sounds like a drug deal or something, but he would just bring peanuts in a brown paper bag for my coworker, and my co coworker would just eat them at his desk. And um, so anyway, I found a really great local company to me that sells peanuts, and it's really reasonably priced. And um, they have an online uh, website. I believe their website is p n u t s. Dot com. Let me double check that. I, I will link it in the show notes, but it's important enough that I want to um, I want to get it right when I tell you about it. Okay, it's peanuts.net. P n u t s dot net, and the company is called Bertie County Peanuts, and it's not Bertie County. It's Bertie. Um. And my boyfriend really likes peanuts, so I have bought him peanuts for a Christmas gift in the past. And so they give you, they, they mail you the nuts in these awesome sacks, like burlap sacks. And this is like empty because we've eaten a lot of them. But, um, and there you can see they're from Windsor, North Carolina. And I, I found out about this place because one of my coworkers wrote about them in the newspaper where I work and just they're just an old like a long time local company and they've been around a long time and they make everything by hand and you get when you order like roasted peanuts you get two two pound bags so it's like you get them in four pound increments and it's crazy reasonably priced like seven bucks for four pounds of peanuts or something something ridiculously cheap like that um and one time I've done Christmas gifts for my family from them. And by the way, this is not like a paid advertisement or anything. This is just me talking about them because I like to eat nuts and I thought maybe you guys might like it too. Um, And it's local to me, which is kind of cool. So um, Bertie County Peanuts. And one time I ordered a Christmas gift and they happened to be out of it. And it's such a small operation. They called me up to tell me and they wanted to offer me some other option. And the guy that called was like, you could, I could just tell he was this really old man and he just had this great accent, you know, just a real slow drawl. And, 
um, it was really good customer service for him to do that. So, um, see, and so you can see they put a little happy holidays from Bertie County Peanuts on here. So I will link to them in the show notes, but that's just a fun, quirky little food thing that I enjoy. So, um, I, maybe you guys will be interested too. <coughs> um, so I think, gosh, I think that was just about everything for me today. Um, that feels, I feel like I'm leaving some stuff out, but I talked about my Susan B. Anderson and I talked about going to Pittsburgh. So yeah. And just to reiterate, if you are in Pittsburgh or are close by and want to meet up Saturday afternoon, please, please shoot me a PM in Ravelry and we can try and sort something out. Okay. So until next week, um, or the week after, happy knitting. I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend wherever you are and that you get lots of knitting time. Bye.